We will start with a very short presentation of uh, this uh, machine. It has two parts. One of it is um, attached to the microscope. You can see here the, the, the blue uh, arrows and uh, the other one is the monitor on which you can see the image. Uh, it offers an image resolution less than 9 microns, so it is so important because it visualizes the decimal membrane, which is 5-10 microns, and its image depth is 11 millimeters, so it enables the full anterior chamber visualization without artifacts, holdover artifacts. In the same time, you can see, and we have in our OR two monitors on the wall. One is with the image from the uh, operating microscope and the other one with the image from the OCT. So anyone, residents or nurses or any colleagues who wants to, to learn uh, and assist uh, the surgeries now are, are able to see in the same time the both images. I took a uh, case series uh, of 18 cases um, uh, in which uh, M-Focus interoperative OCT really helped me in some uh, surgery steps, very important uh, surgery steps, and really helped me in making a decision in uh, how to continue my surgery when I found myself, let's say, in trouble. All surgery have been performed in uh, Oculus Eye Clinic by the same surgeon between January 2017 and 2019, except for the PKs and the cataract eye, of course, all the other cases, especially the lamellar procedures, were during the surgeon's learning curve. So apologize for the mistakes, but this is especially where really OCT really helped me. So I took into consideration 17 corneal transplant eyes, nine were with ultra-thin decimate uh, stripping automatic keratoplasty uh, UT dissect, with the donor lamella prepared by the surgeon using an artificial anterior chamber device. I took into consideration four eyes, where, which were complex eyes with pseudophakia and previous failed PKs, and now they necessitated new PK. Three eyes had DALC surgery for keratoconus, and one eye was a case with preloaded DMEC um, for Fuchs dystrophy. And as you will see in one fake emulsification eye, also I found very helpful this OCT. So let's start with the uh, DSEC cases. In this case, we can observe uh, with the OCT uh, complete decimate detachment, the pres present or not of decimate remnants. We can have a better visualization of a poor position graft or folds or whatever, or spaces between the lamella and the stroma. We can see the correct position of the air bubble under the lamella or between uh, the lamella and the stroma. And we also have a better visualization of the angle, iris, iris cornea angle, correct detachment of the iris from the, and the synechia from the angle. So let's start with one of the cases in five of um, uh, my uh, DSEC eyes. OCT really helped me in uh, seeing and following the decimate remnants. If I, did I clean everything? And as you see here with the red arrow, you will see a, a remnant in the movie, in the video with a yellow arrow and uh, thus after I saw that of course I, uh, I went inside again and continued to, to detach uh, the remnants uh, of the decimate. So thus it helped prevent patients from possibly incomplete lamella attachment in the remnant areas and uh, of course that means uh, a decreased surgery readmission rate. In another case as you will see we have the similar way where, where the red arrow, you just saw it, there's a, a bump remnant of um, a bit of stroma and uh, of decimate, which really needed to be, to be taken out, otherwise there was a, a risk to not to fully and correctly um, stack the cornea to, to the lamella to the stroma. And again, it helped me in cleaning everything, as you see now with, um, in the down of a video, lower video with a yellow arrow, it's completely clean. In another DSEC eye, as you see, I was in my learning curve. The lamella didn't went exactly where I wanted to be positioned uh, uh, towards the stroma. It went directly to the iris. Half of it, it was on the iris, half of it in the anterior chamber. Without this OCT, you don't know exactly where to, to, to put the, the, the air bubble. And OCT, as you see in the upper part, you, you see how it fold, is folded. And um, uh, with my um, syringe, with air bubble, I was able very well to, to push it towards the stroma. And moreover, where you see the, where you just saw the red uh, arrow, 
uh, you saw that the lamella was in contact with iris, so I really need to centrate it better and to move it from the iris to, to set free the, the, the angle. Again, it helped visualize contact between the graft margin and the iris, as you see with the red arrow. And at the end, everything is fine, everything looks fine and well centered, and the iris and the angle is free. This is another case um, in which um, the lamella went uh, directly in the anterior chamber, folded. When I saw it like this, I didn't know, I really didn't know how was it folded, like this or um, upside down with a fold towards the stroma. And this is where really OCT makes, made a difference. I knew exactly that it is folded towards the anterior chamber, towards the iris, iris so I knew exactly where to put my air syringe with the air bubble. So I unfolded very well helping me thus avoiding so many unnecessary and dangerous maneuvers in the anterior chambers and close to the graft. As you see now, the OCT, and look how nice it, uh, it unfolds towards the stroma. Another case in which um, it's the same, as you see, now you look in the, here in the video, the, the, the graft is folded towards the stroma, so not like the previous case towards the, the, um, the iris, but towards the stroma. So it is very dangerous, you don't know exactly where to, to, to put the air bubble. In this case, I needed to put the air bubble uh, on the opposite side, so behind, uh, between the, the lamella and the stroma, push it a little bit towards the iris, and after that, after I have it lying completely unfolded, I put another uh, uh, air bubble underneath the, the, the lamella and push it towards the stroma. Without OCT, intraoperative OCT, I wouldn't have known how exactly, where exactly to go with, uh, with my air bubble. So um, this is uh, really, it was really, really helpful. You don't want to have cases like this. Um, look uh, here, uh, I have a good position. I just want to center the, the, the lamella. I thought I was gentle enough, but it seems I wasn't. So as you see, during my massage maneuvers, it, uh, it folded again. In which direction is it folded? Because here you cannot see. Is it, is it folded in this direction, like in the previous case? So it was very easy for me to, to, to know exactly where to go with the um, syringe with the air bubble and unfolded it completely. And uh, the last uh, of my DISA cases, uh, uh, there are two different cases, but they are similar. You can look in any of them. Look here how we have uh, um, Synechia, the iris is, uh, if you look here, you don't see exactly the periphery. In the microscope, you don't see the periphery. You're not sure that the iris is, uh, at the, the angle is free. But the OCT helped me in visualizing the iris root stuck to the iris, uh, to the cornea, and even in contact with the graft lamella. So, of course, uh, I did what it was supposed to do, um, uh, air injecting and BSS injection, until I, unf until I, uh, took out completely iris from the, from the angle. And this was it at the end, uh, and OCT helped me in visualizing all this. And the DMAC cases in which, as you will see, this is the graft which is, uh, usually the DMAC graft opens like this, yeah, with an with a, um, uh, open part towards the stroma. In this case, it was, when you see a tube like this, a cylinder, a blue cylinder like, like this, you don't know exactly how is it open, like this or like this. And in this particular case, this OCT helped me in visualizing how it is uh, folded. So it was completely unnatural, un not normal folding. So first of all, you need to upside down this uh, folded cylinder and only after that uh, to, to push it uh, towards the stroma. And let's go now to some uh, dark cases. Uh, it's more or less classical, let's say, for the beginners, or at least uh, it's uh, one of the most difficult steps to, uh, in this surgery is to obtain the big bubble. Big air bubble, you are not sure if it is there or not. For example, in this case, I had an emphysema. Was it a big bubble or not? In order to be sure, I just, go to, I just went to the OCT and checked. Look, the emphysema in the cornea, and look how nice you can see the... the uh, the lower part of the air bubble. It is there. So it helped me to, to it encourages me to, to, to go further with my lamellar technique, not to change. Uh, so I went just in a classical way of continuing the dark uh, surgery. Okay, on the contrary, this is a second case in which uh, although I tried 
three times, I didn't get um, a big air bubble. And those city confirmed, confirmed me this, so I didn't get an air bubble. But it was helpful in um, uh, making a decision to go in the same direction for the DALC, not to convert unnecessary to PK, but to keep a DALC technique, but not a big air bubble, but step by step, layer by layer surgery. And I continued in DALC uh, surgery. Another case of DALC in which the second day we had um, a double anterior chamber, you will see here in the OCT done in the, um, in the cabinet, the, the, um, play, the space between the decement and the stroma, of course you need to go uh, back in the OR and to reattach this uh, decement, which is what I did, you will see here. And the OCT not only that, uh, also helped me in visualizing if it is attached or not, because you don't know exactly how much air to inject. You don't want to inject too much because you want to avoid an um, ured zavalia or a, a higher IOP the next day. But you don't want to inject too less because you don't, uh, you're not sure that uh, it is attached. And look how um, um, OCT, intraoperative OCT helped me in. First, I had several smaller air bubbles. It was not enough. Then three bigger air bubbles. It was not enough. And there, afterwards, two bigger air bubble, it was not enough. But at the end, I had uh, um, an air bubble uniform, a completely only one, and everything was fine. And the second uh, day, the, the patient and the eye looked uh, perfect. Let's go now to the PK cases. I have a uh, few cases like this in which you see the, the periphery and the, the cornea hole is completely white. Um, and the preoposity, we saw synechia and so on. This is the case at the end of surgery through the microscope. You don't see anything in the periphery. It's white, you don't see, you need to check. Of course, you can check with the spatula, but this means um, an extra maneuver, uh, dangerous maybe for the, for the endothelium. And this is how, um, um, it looks uh, the next day and here you can see the, the, the video of the case and you will see here how iris was uh, attached to the cornea, to the host cornea and sometimes even in the sutures. So it helped you in, uh, in uh, correcting your surgery, your mistakes, if uh, you caught the, the iris in the sutures or it is caught in the, in the angle helping us uh, thus to, to uh, and avoiding thus to, to readmission the next day if it was the case and these are similar cases how they looked at the end of surgery you don't see anything in the periphery OCT helped me again to check the angle and the sutures and uh, last case believe it or not I found it useful in at least one case of cataract surgery of course I don't have the OCT attached and open for uh, for the cataract surgeries usually but in a case like this, I say, just open my OCT, connect my OCT, and let me check. Because you see here, it's just a tiny second or less than that. Maybe I'm at the end of the surgery, I just want to make the, the, the IOP normal, and look, just a, a tiny line, maybe is there, is there or not, you cannot be sure, you can miss it for sure. But I thought, is it a, a decimal detachment? put my uh, connect uh, please my my OCT and it did uh, confirm my uh, diagnosis it was um, um, a decimate uh, detachment as you see accidental decimate a stupid accident for an experienced surgeon it is really stupid but things can happen and uh, uh, with this OCT I confirmed my diagnosis and I knew exactly what to do if I wouldn't have seen that or if I wouldn't have confirmed that the next day the patient would have had um, uh, white cornea, corneal edema, I don't know what exactly it is, I would have put him to an um, OCT in the cabinet and there I notice, oh, it's a, it's a detachment of the decimate, I need to go back in the OR and so on. But no, with the helping of the intraoperative OCT, I could do all this in the same session. And again, uh, I checked first with the smaller air bubbles, it was not enough. But at the end, I put some more air bubbles and I have a complete uh, attached uh, decimate. So again, I avoided, uh, I avoided uh, readmission in the OR. So let's have some conclusions just to see what you have been missing if you didn't try it so far. Intraoperative OCT is known for its help in DMEX surgeries, but the benefits and help in decision-making steps of DSEC, DALC, and PK procedures, and even in cataract surgeries, are less highlighted. 
So I have now two years experience in working with it and I can say that uh, in focus intraoperative OCT in corneal transplant allows better visualization when advanced corneal opacities preclude good anterior chamber visualization, that's, that is for sure. It brought me more confidence during the procedure. So surgical steps and intraoperative complications have been better managed right in the surgery, during the surgery, offering us a, safe, a higher safety profile for the surgery. And I think it is a must-have tool during the learning curve in lamellar corneal transplants. Interoperative OCT in focus is also valuable in cataract surgery, as you just saw, when some complications such as decimate des uh, detachment occurs. It brings a reduction of surgery re readmission rate and reduction of surgery complication. Okay, thank you very much and thank you very much. <laughs>